somebody fucking giving a blowjob the whole night long. And we're live. <laughs> What's up, TIW Mafia? What a way to start with Joe giving a blowjob all night long. It's hey. just, it, it never stops. Like, he can't keep his fake-ass teeth in his mouth. Guys. Dude. I can't. It's fucking 2019, and we're live. So, like, remember when we t- talked about how if we could only do this through MySpace and do it live with people? <laughs> <laughs> On MySpace. There are, probably right? people listening, there are probably people listening to us right now that don't know what MySpace is. Right. You think? Or what it was. Hmm. I guess that's true. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, there's... We are old. I, you're right, because MySpace... I mean, that's old, dude. That's really... I, here, it's just fun. I'm glad we're here. I'm just... It's been too long. Uh, Twitter's cool. Um, we're cool. Uh, I don't know. What do we... I mean, we've got a bunch of shit going down between WWE, the Raw reunion. What did... Did JP, did you watch that or not? I did. I did. I watched the majority what? of it. Fucking loved it. So, how about... Like, I know we've talked a little bit. Like, you talk, why don't you talk about what you would have changed or what you would have been different and the reasons why you would have changed that? Would have been more Stone Cold. It was, like, too little too late on the Stone Cold. Way like, too late, like, as far as him coming in the end? Yeah, but God damn it! now I want a Stone Cold Christmas card because he ain't sending them shit out, them shits out. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my question is with I know I haven't watched it, so then you can't have an opinion. I have a question. <laughs> I have a question based on something I read, and I don't know if it was visible on TV. What I read, and I think it was put out by by the um, by Ben in the in the website uh, that Scott Hall was kept out of the ring during the Scott the Stone Cold segment because of the alcohol. I, I was. Know. That was. I didn't catch probably the that. last thing. I and I, I mean, know. I can understand why he's had issues in the past with it, but I just want. I just don't know if like he was kept out or if he stayed out. I did. What I did notice was that like Mark Henry was drinking water, um, and several there were, there was a bunch of people that just weren't drinking beers. Although, like shit, who wouldn't share a beer with Stone Cold? I mean. <laughs> I what? guess we all know we all know there was one ECW guy that wasn't there for sure. Just incredible has a serious issue with that. Yeah, yeah. In his well, I'd like to talk about that someday too, because we got a whole spin on that one. You listen, you got to talk to Anthony about that. Talk to AJ <laughs> about that because he has. I I know for a fact he has a, pers- a perspective of that that no one else has. He was doing commentary during that match. And fucking Just Incredible's girlfriend sat down next to him, or wife, whatever she is, and started rubbing him down to the point where right? he had to he had to get up and walk away. Yeah, Just Incredible's girlfriend was rubbing him down while he was announcing the match. Yeah, he, to the point where he didn't know what G- to do. Joe, are you having? Are you struggling with your phone? No, I'm just clumsy. It's <laughs> <laughs> worse than me, huh? I'm just yeah, trying to you, figure out how. Now you know what it sounds like. Now yeah, you know, know what it. Now you know what it feels like. It's like here's a here's a cool. You'll learn this is that there's this cool thing called a mute button where you can just push it. <laughs> Nobody can, can hear you. Face? Can it mute your so, face? You can mute my face. No, but I don't want. He's so cute. I know. Up, up, anyway, up. let's get back. To, I mean, raw reunion, right? Too, so Stone Cold, too late, too often. Right. Yeah, like I would have had more of him. Like I liked, the, I loved what they did with the twenty four seven belts. People are pe- people are complaining about that, but I thought it was hysterical. No, I, I, you and I already know because we already talked about this. We, uh, Corey Graves has called that thing television title more than once. Right. And that's exactly. It's not a twenty four seven title, which is cool and all, but it, it's called what it is. It's, it's a television title that's that's working its way around all the shows that it should. Right. But imagine if, like, during it, instead of, like, commercials, right, instead of commercials for Raw, imagine if they just showed clips of someone getting pinned for that. 
<laughs> so like, if do you guys like, remember? Oh, I mean, did, do they does it does it does the WWE app still like when you're when it goes to commercial break? This was like a couple of years ago, I think. Like it's, if you had the WWE network and you had the app, when it went to commercial, yeah. you could watch no, the Vince, wrestling on the app, right? Vince McMahon does not want any wrestling during commercials anymore. That is, I'm sorry, but when is he going to go away? Well, I'm guessing the sponsors we're going complaining are going away. I just don't. Why don't you split screen? Why don't you split screen and put their ad up there with wrestling? They, they I mean, that's the that. point. Was it, like what I noticed last night was they cut the commercial and they came back and I forget what match it was, but uh, it might have been the Roman Reigns Samoa Joe. Like they were waiting in the ring for the commercial to end. Which is cool. I don't get it. Like well, I don't get it. I, I understand it's a business. I understand all that. But what I don't get is why I, the product has to suffer for sponsors. I mean, it's corporate America. I understand and I get it. And that, that's why it's we're probably going off topic here. But it, it's this is never going to be AEW versus WWE. Are, are we agreeing on that? Yeah, I agree with that. And but getting before I jump on that, it's about the commercials, about the advertisements. Why don't they play the commercial during the their entrances? Because you want to everybody's see seen the same entrance every time. Play That's what everybody watches it for, man. Why? So you don't like, like entrance music anymore? Uh, yeah, but if you see the same thing every time, it gets old. You know what I'm saying? It's because you're old. Think about the ten year old that wants that wants that le- loves it when Kofi's when, loves it when the new days hit. Like he gets to act it, he gets to do it, he, he does all that stuff. I understand, but you miss half the match by an ad. If you put it during the thing, they see it every time. Well, no, that's what the thing. They're not cutting the matches anymore. They they're not gonna run. They're not gonna have wrestling during commercials anymore. It's gonna be like in between. So they gonna put out the stools and give them a glass of water with the towel, and like you know, yeah. they're gonna be thirty minute, the three minute rounds. Well, here's the thing: is people are gonna bitch any either way they any way they do it. It's it's wrestling fans that we, we exactly. Are. You can have I'm not a, I'm not bitch. Are we bitching though? Like do we bitch? Like we we might complain, for rightfully so, because Heyman and Bischoff are back. Which I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to reinvent the wheel. Everybody keeps comparing AEW to WCW, which it's not. Um, not yet. I, I, I the the production is. ECW, WCW, like it is, and that's just because that's it's it's Cody versus Strips. It's not AEW versus WWE. Yeah, it's it's AEW versus NXT and Evolve. It's it's for the next independent talent that's coming up. NXT is, I'd say, if I was gonna rate the top five wrestling promotions, number five would probably be MLW. Number four would be Impact. And two and three would be a tie, and it would be uh, between NXT and AEW. NXT, I would think, would be more number two, but I think AEW could bake that. But by far, number one is WWE. 100%, right? There's uh, there's no – and not – what do you – let me ask you this. What are you basing that off of? I understand, I understand because I know you, but people that are listening, what are you Straight basing numbers. that off of? Straight huh? numbers. Ratings? Numbers, yeah. Yep, I mean, MLW uh, MLW might even take over that, that Impact role because I, I feel like they get better distribution than Impact right now. Well, it's just tough being on BN Sports. It's it's tough for the average. It's easier to watch than Impact, I guess. Uh, I, I agree with your list. I, I would throw, you know, my list is going to be different just because yeah, of the, like, the... You do like different styles of wrestling. Absolutely, and that's why I like our list is because everybody, you know, when people see the list, they're especially the women's list. Like but, that's fun for me because you see all sorts of names. Like, oh my God, who's that? I don't I, know. I've never seen that listen, person before. We could ask. We could take a Twitter poll, and I know Jay Rubes would say your list is wrong. Oh, <laughs> dude, what was that guy's issue? You, your list was. Wrong. I think I think you were his issue. Joe, are we gonna see him tomorrow? I really hope so. I'm going to wear my Irish whip shirt, and hopefully he comes out and says something. And I'm not looking for trouble. I'm not looking for anything. I'm just going there to watch the show. And if this guy happens to come up and say something, he says something, yeah. hopefully it's not, like, 
hopefully he doesn't want to start any crap with us because well, okay. I don't want that to happen. Right, I don't either, but that could be a bad night for him. If he it wants would be. Call, I guess that's the thing. Healthy discussion. We're going to have okay. the purple cock with us. A what? This is, we're so, this is why we need set. We don't, we're always so off topic. Like, we never can stick to shit. Well, we're still talking about, how about the fact that John Cena rapped last night? Dude, I, you already know what I want Cena. You don't, you already know what I want to happen. And if this, John if, Cena needs to wrap up his career. No. Are you kidding me? You're kidding yep. me, right? Like, no, he's kidding me. He sells more T-shirts. Than I'm anyone. hanging up on him right now. He sells more T-shirts than anyone <laughs> in the WWE. He sells what more if, merch if, than no, anyone else does. I understand he sells the merch. I understand he's a big money maker, but. As much as the the industry has evolved, he's stayed stagnant, in my opinion. And you here's the key word you you did say stagnant because here's he, he's going through a lot of shit, man. He's losing somebody. He, he he's losing uh, a public relationship. It's been going on for a couple of years. It sucks. It's probably humiliating. Um, he he's a different dude, man. He is just a different guy. I, I me personally. I would love to see him turn heel. Like, I want it so bad, but he will not do it. If he turned heel, oh, if he, he turned would have heel. It would be a better, it would, it would, he would be another anti heel of the level, almost to the level of Stone Cold. Right. The fan so that, following. that's my whole contention. That is my, my, that is my contention is that just because John Cena wants to be the face all the time. That is why it's so debilitating for these other for this other talent to come up. Because can you imagine the faces you can make with John Cena as a heel? You can make a lot, or you can have the people that were billed as a as a heel that want to be the face give them a shot. Exactly. And here's the thing: when you get Cena out there, he's going to be a heel or a face no matter what. But you lose his merchandise and money. That's okay. He can. He's at the point now. If if if, if somebody would oh, just sit down with him and say, "Hey, we're gonna try this. Whatever money that you you think he'd lose money, seriously, I think he'd make more money." He'd, no. I think I think he. I'm agreeing. It's funny. I'm agreeing with Joe. I think he. Well, I don't know, man. It's tough. So, it, no. He probably would lose because of the kids. He would I, no. I think money. the kids would go for it. Depends on the level of heel he goes. The how WWE, many kids will? No, you don't want. Uh, I hate the fact that people buy fucking heel shirts. How many kids were all over Stone Cold when he Stone was Cold all over Sto- he was when face. Stone Cold was beating Vince? Stone How many kids were all over that? Drinking beers, kicking ass and, and drinking beers. Because kids were Vince all over was that. the heel. Stone Cold was the baby on that. I he was the anti-hero. But, but cool he was the heel? anti-hero, though. He was the face in a bad way. A cool heel is a face. But, but I'm saying that's the way I think Cena's going to be. He's going to become that no matter how bad he com- becomes – He's going to be the anti anti heel. He's going to be no. the anti hero. He's no got to be. No, I think he needs to make a. I think it has to go 360 degrees. I mean, For he won't man. do it just because of the make a wish stuff that they do. He just. Yeah. He won't do it. And I think. And that's where I agree with you, where he's holding things up. It's it's John's. But he, you guys know I'm a huge John Cena mark, but I'm always going to be a Cena mark. I, I, the, the Doctor of Thugonomics is always going to be my man. Uh, above all, because he's the dude that held the shit together when everybody else left. And I'm not a huge Cena. I'm, I like Cena. I'm not a huge Cena fan. I like him. But just like the just like the Young Bucks, I'm not a fan of the Young Bucks, but I appreciate their hustle and what they do and make money. Cena is not a pro wrestler. Let me get that. Let me let me put that out there right now. He's a, he's John a Cena he's a is not a professional wrestler. He is a sports entertainer. He has a sports entertainer. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. but hold on. What's the, what was yes. the prototype? I, uh, yeah. The prototype I mean, but him and Orton, I mean, it, I, I, I'm just, it, it's so oh. frustrating for me to watch the talent. I think the guys from Talkamania, I mean, this is like a year ago, we're calling Vince the collector. I mean, when's the last time you see Deanna Perrazzo anywhere? When's the last time you see Chelsea Green? When's the last time you see these people that they grabbed? I mean, we're going to see Swerve maybe. Yeah. So it's just super frustrating, and that's why it's not AEW versus WWE because all WWE is going to grab these guys and pay them a, a ton of money and, and sit on them, which they're doing. 
That's exactly like you said, they want all the best, and they want them in their pocket for in case they eventually use them. Well, no, it's on some of them though. It is about just not having other people be able to use them. So it's not but necessary that's, that WWE wants ruins, to use these people. It's that they don't want other people to use these people. So these people don't get work though. They're getting paid, but they're not working. They're not practicing. They're not keeping their talent going. They're doing house. Oh shows. yeah, they are. They're, yeah, they're doing house shows and stuff like that. But they never. I mean, Dana Brooke is another example of that. Remember, I mean. She, amazing athlete what does she do i mean oh. it's just i understand the whole no non you don't want commercial and wrestling but you, you gotta do something you, you you just have too much talent to waste and that's all you is you're wasting it like if i'm sitting here and i'm watching smackdown right now and i'm gonna i'm gonna wait you think i'm gonna sit here and wait for three minutes to watch smackdown absolutely not you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna wait for this to come out on hulu uh, I'm gonna take that hour and a half, and I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it. I'm not. I mean, there's not gonna be any ads. I'm not gonna deal with this horse shit. Three and four, three, four, sometimes five minutes, and then back to wrestling. That's that's just it doesn't work. It doesn't pan out. It never will. And that's why I'm not a sports entertainment fan. I'm gotta, just not. I gotta plug something real quick. The three way mm. theater guys, my friends at Three Way Theater. Um. Another podcast that talks wrestling, wrestling movies, and TV show wrestling TV shows. So at the Hall of Fame cer- ceremony this year, I sat down with them for a little while. And yeah. that episode is now up on threewaytheater.com. I actually listened to it the other day. And it, it's, you don't hear a whole lot of me. I only sat down with them for about 10 minutes, and Steve the Turtle Whiner was singing for about 8 of those 10 minutes, so. Oh, my God. It was, yeah, I didn't know. I, I couldn't say nothing. All I did, he started singing behind me. I put the microphone up to him. It was amazing. Didn't Paul <laughs> Roma sit down with them for a good 15, they, 20 minutes? They had Roma. Yeah, Roma came up. If we had our equipment, if our equipment had worked, we would have had some access to people on that. Uh, Roma sat down with them. They had a few people that sat down. Okay, now that we... Here, now, it'll be others. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm. Uh, I was just talking to Joe Bruin about an hour ago. I'm gonna see him on August fourth at Fenway Park. Dude, that's. Can we... I just. I'm. 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 I'm graciously optimistic about where we're heading and what we're doing. I am. Very much so myself. I think a lot of times I let my head get ahead of us, and I need you guys to pull me back. What you do. We try. We try. Well, like, so, well, J- like I said, J- like I, I want to. I want to listen. I want to hear JP rebook Raw, and talk about the stuff that they missed and they could have done a little bit pro- okay. more. Uh, uh, just so, a little bit better. Just off, refined a little bit better. Off the bat, one subtle thing that I would have changed, and I texted you about this last night, or maybe I called you about this last night, was um, Pat Patterson winning the twenty four seven title. Right. They actually showed him pinning him, and then they referenced Rio de Janeiro. Which? Pat Patterson was the first Intercontinental champ, and he won it in a tournament in Rio de Janeiro. That, <laughs> that never, but did he? It never happened. There's no records of this other than WWE telling people this tournament happened. They and this is just, back in this is back in the day when they could when they could make up shit whenever they wanted. Like right. there's no fact checking, no nothing that's gonna go on. So the, the the Rio de Janeiro was huge, but it would have been like you said, it would have been cooler if he they would have just out of the room, shown him. him. And they did that at one point. I uh, I forget who did that. Someone walked into the limo and walked out with it. <laughs> and then the million dollar man bought it at one point. How much did you enjoy uh, all the Samoan stuff last night on Raw? Awesome. Was there enough? I mean, you had Usos, you had Samoa Joe, you had Roman Reigns. We were missing one big guy, you had uh, Samoa, but you had Rikishi. You had Samoa Joe versus Samoan Joe. <laughs> <laughs> right? Good one. That That's was, classic right there. My boy Rob Tuttle. That was a good match, that. man. That, 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 that was a good was. match. And here it, and here we're watching I'm watching SmackDown right now and, and Joe's on SmackDown again. So I guess the wild card thing is good. 
uh, all of it's fine and dandy, but where do you where do you draw the line on talent and do they have enough? Like, is this that layover between what we used to call when everybody left for WCW and they had to refine and define new talent, which is Cena and Orton and Christian and Edge and all these guys? I think that's funny. I honestly right? do. I, I think it's a they got a pretty good well right now of talent between NXT. Um, 205 Live, there's a ton of people that they can use. Like, they they got Mike Bennett, who is an incredible wrestler, believe it or not, and they don't do shit with him. That, the whole, I mean, I understand that we have to do with Maria and the pregnancy thing. I'm actually digging that. Yes. I think I it's hilarious. The, I love that they have him the guts to pull that off. WWE <laughs> two years ago would not have done that. Do you, I mean, they. everybody says the gloves are off. It's no longer yeah. a PG rating. It's this, it's that. You I guess I want to cl- try and clarify what that means to me. If the right? gloves are off, then they're going to bring back May Young. <laughs> what that means to me is that it's, it's just more sports entertainment and less pro wrestling. What do you mean? I see that too. It's exactly what you did. I agree with that. And... What that means to me a step further is to say it's not going to be more gritty wrestling. It's not going to get hardcore or anything like that. It's going to be more more of a, uh, a vocal gloves off. If you know what I mean, they're going to talk a better game. They're going to probably get a little bit more risque with their language to a degree. But I don't think much of the of the wrestling is going to change. It's going to be I more, guess here's, more of a me, bitch off. Take this for example, uh, Adam Cole and John Gargano. Yeah. Different wrestling style than Kofi Kingston and Samoa Joe match, right? Yeah. Hundred. Am I right or wrong on that? No, hundred percent. You're right. Okay, so when we talk about branding and WWE and Raw and SmackDown and NXT, that NXT product is the New Japan pro wrestling style. Can is that agreeable? Yeah. Not necessarily sports entertainment. Correct. Am I am I right? I mean, am I right? Kind of. Does this make sense? Say it's sports entertainment, but it's really not. Oh, it makes sense. It's sports entertainment, but there's I I think there's a lot more substance to it. There's more. I get more substance when I watch an NXT K show or NXT Takeover, or NXT UK or Evolve. Or, or I get more substance than if I sit down on a Monday or Tuesday night and and watch like literally right now. See, they have ads going with SmackDown a lot. This is what they should be doing. This is exactly right. Well, hang on. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll we'll talk a little more about this. Okay, fine. You do it. Okay. We All right, yes, we're back. Sorry, we had to take a little commercial break. That doesn't make too much sense to the people like Pete Opolis who are listening live, but <laughs> it will to the people that watch the re- the record. Shout out to Pete. Joe. Can you read? Joe, can you read tonight? I can read. Can you read, read that tweet? Can you read at Pete Opolis's tweet about us talking about John Cena? Can you read? Do what I read he's it got right? There? I'll read it right now. Yep. Shoot, at Pete Opolis. Says, best way for John Cena to turn heel is to team with Shane McMahon. People will be pissed, but know down the line that he and Shane will turn on each other and Cena is a babyface again. And Cena doesn't look as bad as when The Rock tried his movie star heel turn. Uh, I, okay. Did this just happen a little while ago? And here's going to be the contention is storylines never have the chance to hashtag evolve uh, in a way where 
this could happen because this kind of just happened with the Miz, didn't it? Um, right? I mean, yes. him and yeah, him and the Miz. I mean, it was what a couple months. The problem is, like WWE fans will follow along and like enjoy whatever they're told to like. Bunch of lemmings. The difference is well, that's um, the, that's the WWE universe. That's why when I do my picks, I try to do my picks like I'm part of that crew, and it's he, tough, man, because he, he added it sucks. Now the difference is though that um, the WWE is not patient enough for that anymore with their storylines. They rush everything, like a storyline. I mean, that, that's it, right? Taz, Taz, and RVD. Those two feuded for a year without touching it, each other, without being in the same damn building as each other for a year at a feud like that, just on promos. The WWE has to start and finish every storyline within a month now. And that drives me nuts. Like, give something, like you just said, time to evolve. Let it grow legs and run. See how far it can go. Uh, let me, you guys aren't watching this, but let me, tell me, it, Orton is watching... Kofi Kingston and Samoa Joe wrestle, right? Professional wrestle or sports entertainment or whatever you want to call it, right? Well, how does this make sense at all right now? Does it? Like, am I missing something? Like, how does Orton automatically get interjected into this title stuff with Samoa Joe and Kofi? How does that happen? Because they have nothing else to do with it. With Orton? Yeah, they haven't used it. Well, here's I'm gonna here's if you Bray Wyatt, that's all I'm gonna say. Bray Wyatt. Oh, I, I'm loving it. Which part? The whole Bray Wyatt thing right now. Oh yeah, that's Why? blowing me out of the water. I love that. Well, it, it it all comes down to the Hardys. Uh, Orton took basically took out Bray Wyatt a year ago. They they ended that way too fast, and now they're they can't get it back in. But man, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton back together again. You could even throw um, grab Elias. Or, I mean, we just don't have the stables like we used to. And I I know the WWE wants to get away from stables. However, the club, or Finn Balor. I mean, you know everybody uh, wants that, dude. How much? So how much time are they dedicating to the Bullet Club and shitting on them now? A lot. The like old, a lot. See the original club, the only club that matters. And what's funny is it's still it's the Finn Balor's and shit that are doing it. I mean, yeah, I know. it's written for them, but they're, they're taking those jabs. Right, Finn, I, you, we all Finn was our guest. He was he yeah. before any of this ever started. Fergal Devitt was, was on, on the show. He just, you guys, yeah, you get on. He was, and he's a, a Lego collecting, just a an ultimate nerd. And I don't think there's anything you can ever do to that young man to phase him. You took the you took the club away from him. You just you you take the demon away from him. I, he just hasn't been used properly. It's it. I could go. It, this is the instance of you take a, a professional wrestler and put him in sports entertainment, and it does not work. But man, he's got a big piece of junk. Um, <laughs> I never saw it, but I may or may not have heard a story or two about that. He's Irish. I doubt it. Oh, Joe, do My a... camera's on. My camera's on. I'm not going to... No. Do as a... Um... Uh, there was a story at Marina Bay, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> that involved around him, DC Dillinger, and a few other people who I won't name because they're either alive. But <laughs> yeah, let's. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. You guys cool with that? Yeah. How excited? I know Joe. You haven't had the chance to talk to this man yet, but. Let's just say that we did an interview with Schaff, and it didn't go too well. It went, actually it went amazing. We just forgot to record it. Was all. So hey, didn't it forget, sounds like us. Didn't yeah, forget to it record just, it. Huh? Didn't forget to record it. Skype glitch. Oh, Skype forgot to record it. 
for us. That's right. It only recorded like five seconds. You did record it. They just lost it for us. Right. Uh, anyway. Is, was, is Chris Cash running Skype now? Yeah. <laughs> Brian Cage had to back out. So we get uh, uh, Christopher Daniels and the 8XGP. So I sent a message to Shaf, like, hey, dude, can we uh, can we do this interview? Should I quote him? I'm going to quote him no. right now. You guys, I'm going to quote I'm going to quote Shaf right now. This is specifically, uh, this is, this is cool. There may or may not be information that was made available to us that's not available to everybody. What's that? In his test. He's, how many times did he say he was going to win that belt? True. Okay. I mean, it wasn't, it's not unknown. Like, if you ask him right now, he's like, I'm walking out of 8XGP with the belt. It's me. It's Artie. And I'm going to take the belt. That's just, I should have had it with Strickland. I'm just going to take the belt now. Okay. Yeah, so, okay then. Should probably wrestle and win it, not just take it. Well, here, here's what I say. I said, would you be opposed uh, to going after the 8X GP? I double-checked the calendar. Um, I couldn't do it this week because I'm going to go hang out with Twisted tomorrow. Actually, I could, probably could do it. And then Manson and uh, Zombie are here on Thursday night. Um you going to that? That's a good show. Yeah, I will. So this is this is Shaft's re- reply. I mean, it's arguably better because then you'll, you'll know you have the champ on. The call. There you go. Just his like when we look at when when we were able to look back at this guy, it I think it's going to be amazing. Yeah, he's he's such a good dude, a solid guy, and just so confident in his ability. And he's Let's a veteran. Start. We've talked about WWE for the last half an hour. Can we talk? Can we just take like the last half hour and just talk about the kids that we're really excited about that are coming up and where they're at and what they're doing? Yeah, hell yeah. Can we just? How about let's just go one by one. Like Joe will say a name, and then you can say a name, and then I'll say a name, and we won't say anything. We'll just say all their names. All right. How about you, Joe? Who you, who are you most excited about right now this year? I'm actually excited to see someone that. He's not really on the indie scene here, but me, JP, and I saw him in Quincy not so long ago, and he's really impressed with the J-Stick. Yeah. Who? Out of Australia. JXT, the J-Stick. Oh, yeah. Hanging out of Australia. I, I, I okay. like that kid. What about you, JP? So, someone who, in the past, really made a name for himself disappeared for a little while and came back and is now probably more over than he was even when he was in the WWE. Thomas Santel, formerly known as Antonio Thomas. Oh, really? It's a good one. Oval Team Dream. The ner- so, he's... Do you know who he's teaming up with now? No. So, Thomas Santel is a nerd. He's teaming up with Nick Gage and the chance that they're getting from the audience so it's probably going to be the tag team name if they form one is Nerd or Death Kill Nerd or Death Kill? Nerd or or Nerd or Death Kill instead of Nerd or Death Kill Nerd or Death Kill Oh I want that t-shirt Nick Gage <laughs> It's they're, they're incredible together They they've had a couple of matches already with Beyond Wrestling and they, they, I know they're, he's the, um, he's Thomas Santel's tag partner versus, I think, LAX, uh, Sunday at American Rana. And it's, they, they're incredible together. They have such chemistry, and you wouldn't think those two would, because it's so completely different styles. But it's really cool, and I've talked to, I've talked to Tom since. We will get him on at some point. But I, I like what you're saying with that with that tag team. That could be like a, it's almost like a yin and a yang, right. two different sides of it that work well together and kind of keep the balance of each other in check. But Joe, you've been even before he tagged. I think we were at one of the Beyond shows before they were tagging up. How crazy does the crowd go for him? Chanting nerd and oval team. Oh hell yeah! Before you know it, the concession stand is going to be selling oval team. Right. Now, what about you, Josh? 
Uh, Sadie Gibbs. Okay. Without a doubt. That's my number one you top always... that I, I'm waiting for. Like, I'm legitimately waiting for. Like, I follow the Indies around here. The, the Northeast. And a little wider than that, sometimes I'll watch a couple of shows. You follow the Indies all over the country. So you, you tend to come up with wild cards. I do. I uh, Take a Tessa Blanchard last year. We right. were the only ones. Well, I shouldn't say we were the only ones. We were the only ones that we know of that were as hot and high on as Tessa as we were. There's a lot of podcasts that don't matter that we don't know of. That's true. That is highly true. So hey, the, I mean, that's matter? just that's that's who I'm. I mean, I could go down the list. I could give you. I could just. I mean, between Sadie Gibbs, uh, Jacob Batu. Um, hey, I, that name rings a bell. Yeah. Uh, Orange Cassidy, I'm super jacked about. Like, he's yeah. just one of the dudes that I just, I can't get enough of him. That guy's on fire. I, <laughs> or, um, I mean, you could go through the regular. We always talk about Anthony. We always talk about Briggs. Um, Dale Hurst is, is back and, and healthy again. Yep. I mean, Wheeler is, is back from WXW and, and doing stuff and beyond. And I guess that's the thing is in this half hour, it's like if you guys aren't checking out, out like, Chaotic and Beyond and Limitless and Defy and um, I would even go far so far as to say um, PW Ultra or am I leaving anything out? I mean, just right offhand, and CZW, ROH. I mean, the old school guys. CZW is going to do a versus with XWX. Yeah. Or WXW from Germany. Yeah. Anthony Green was on that. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's our job. That's our niche and that's what we do is we we uh, we 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 watch independent pro wrestling i'm infatuated with it on a regular basis just because i don't know man i just love supporting these kids and how hard how hard this generation is working i got one more wrestler i like to watch who i like watching him live when we saw him at beyond and we saw him on on aew Marco Stunt. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Dude, how about how much did you did you get to see um, like Dickinson? Yeah, I loved it. How'd you I, like the Dirty I, Daddy? Dirty Daddy, yeah. I'm a huge fan of Chris Dickinson. I, I we tried to work it out with him. Um, <laughs> we um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just got a message that made me laugh. We tried to work it out with him to come on the show in time. Didn't work out. Uh, if I get a chance to talk to him tomorrow, we'll try to figure that all out right then. Yeah, I could, I mean, even Layla, Layla Hirsch. Uh, yeah, I love her. Lay, you, I mean, she's another one you were talking about like a year ago because she was out of CZW. Yeah, that's a DJ Hyde. That's that's legit Lariat right there. Hashtag legit Lariat. That's Layla Hirsch. She's. I mean, the article that I did was that was no shit. It was I did just didn't pick that first that match because it was the first match at the Uncharted Territory the other week. Like that was that was a legit match. I mean, it was amateur wrestling. They were getting to know each other and doing the stuff. And Bacabella was doing his you know his shit that he does, and Crockett was just missing it. But when they when uh when what the hell does he do? Who? Bacabella. What about him? What does he do? You said he's doing the shit that he does. What does he do? He's so funny behind the mic. Like, if I can listen, I could just, like, I wouldn't have to watch the match. i just listen to him he's an the old entire school, time. He's an old school promoter from the 80s trying to help these guys out now. And he it's am- or, he just, he, he's he, amazing. He may or may not threaten to blackball them by calling, uh, <laughs> <laughs> by calling Chris Von Eric and telling them they'll never work in Texas again and... You know, he's I mean, Mike, Quack, Mike Quackenbush is wrestling 25 matches this year is all. And we all he's going to do we got, we got to see one of places. them. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. How cool is that? One it's of just, them was him tagging up with the with Green Ant Defense and uh, Razorhawk, who are yeah. all friends of the show, like really good friends of the show. And um, versus the Hatfields I got and I think the Cajun Crawdaddy. So he's not picking like. He's not going and saying, I want to wrestle Randy Orton or Cody Rhodes or anyone he could that he'll get a great match out of. He's going and picking these young kids that he knows he can get in the ring and make them a little bit better. 
Just Absolutely. put them over. He's doing what a veteran wrestler is supposed to do. How cool was that match, Joe? That was amazing. What was the best so part of it? In the match. Um, Joe one got, of the best parts of it for me. Joe got hit by D-Fan. <laughs> I did. D-Fan came down and said hello. <laughs> yeah. But you're getting that acknowledgement from the ring, like, during the match. It's kind of cool. Right. It is. It's And that, I guess that's the thing that I try to... You like, cool you can watch the too. WWE as much as you want. It's it's always going to be the WWE. It's always going to be sports entertainment. They're going to incha- interchange. We can have opinions. We can do this. We can do that. But the amazing thing about independent wrestling is you can really support these kids. Like, you can buy their hats. You can buy their T-shirts. You can literally just be a Patreon and send them money. You know, some of these women even, like, put gifts out there, and these fans will buy them shit. It's, it's pretty amazing yeah. where these people are at right now. But... I think that's what we're really good at, and I think that's what people appreciate is that we can we can give these names, and people start to check them out, and they go, "Oh my gosh!" Like, oh, I just I can't get over enough. I can't. I Orange Cassidy is just so much fun, like fun. Like yes. he's a perfect mix. He's it's, just I I love it. I'm not a huge fan of the ha ha stuff. Like I like it. It has its place, but not when it's the whole match. But I love Orange Cassidy. I really do. Well, we all know that he can work. Right. Like, that's not a – that's not – he works in other promotions, and we know that he can go. I've seen him in other incarnations, I guess I'll say. Yes. And, like, you wouldn't know that they were the same person, literally, and people don't know. And it's and just put, crazy the different styles, and he found a niche that really works, and he's making really good. He's making a living on the independent wrestling right now. But like and when they, he when he has his hands in his pocket, is he playing pocket pool? He's let's see, he's being relaxed. You know, oh, okay. so one thing like one thing that you get taught from Mike Quackenbush is it's the little things. So his pants. On the back, there's actually like a leather tag on them, like would be on the back of denim jeans, and it actually says "relaxed fit." So even his jeans are relaxed. <laughs> but he, but I bet he wears tidy whities <laughs> Probably does. Who well, else? I mean, is there any? Are there any names? I mean, I I have a few more that I'm super fucking stoked about, but I don't know if you guys do. See, here's but here's my problem with Orange Cassidy. I have a I have a like yin and yang to that because outside of what he's doing and touring the indies and making okay money, where does it go? It's traveling. Know. You know what I mean? It, it's just like Joey uh Joey fucking Dick Joey Ryan. Yeah. Where does that go? I think you can evolve that character. I do. I think you, you can know? evolve, or you can evolve Orange Cassidy in a in more avenues and directions than you can take uh, Joey Ryan. Yes. Can you? Oh, absolutely. I just think there's it, it, the sky is the limit for a lot of this talent, and I I guess I'm just more excited about the female aspect than I am the male because it's so new, like it's right. so new. I was watching. I was reading some tweets today. And it drove me nuts. And this will kind of confuse you a little, Josh, because you know my views on certain things. Is apparently yes. there's a, a, a transgender, not Sunny Kiss, there's another one similar to that that's wrestling as a female, identifies as a female. Okay. In wrestling females. Okay. And I, someone else, I, I just saw the conversation, uh, Tara Calloway had shared it on Facebook screenshots of it um i don't see the problem with that honestly i see a problem so if i I don't want to watch a man hit a woman ever but if you're putting on a match like brian cage and jordan grace did and i forget that i'm watching a man versus a woman and i'm just watching a wrestling match i have no problem with it yeah i mean agreed just go watch the. Just go uh, watch Layla, Layla versus uh, John Silver, Silver number last one. week. Yeah, that, John you didn't. You don't realize that was an intergender match. That was just two people wrestling. Well, when she's in the corner and she says, "Come on, motherfucker!" 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, it, every match has a set psychology to it. There's a feel-out process. There's a... When, when she took that fucking slap to the chest, yeah. the first one, it was brutal. I mean, brutal. And then that changed that changed not only the the tone of that match but the entire night after that. That's yeah. I mean, it was that was one of my favorite matches of the night. Yeah, uh, you guys got to see a uh, mine. It it was my favorite match, and we, not like I said, not just because it was the first one, but because it was it was just that good. Yeah, we weren't there live last week, so we I, like I was watching that just like you on Independent Wrestling TV. Sponsor us. Sponsor us. Yes. Put us on. But. Where do you guys, and Joe, I don't, i sorry, but we're, I have a question because we've got like 15 minutes left, and I want to talk a little bit more about the women since we're getting ready to do our top 10 list for July. Why don't we do that? Um, can we take one more break, and we'll do that right when we yeah, do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll be right back, guys. Uh. All right, we're back, guys. <laughs> Again, that doesn't make much sense to those people listening live, but I swear to God, it will when you listen. Here's I'm gonna I'm gonna start rambling some names, okay? And you guys can. The floor is gonna be open, but I want to at least get ten names out there that I'm super excited about this year as much as I was Sadie Gibbs is going to be number one for me I, it just doesn't matter right now it's just she if she's going to change the AEW women's division it's, it's inevitable but I'm going to start throwing some names out here and I'll throw ten of them out there and then if you let's just talk about it cool can I add cool. one in before we do it because I don't have much more I have this one and it's a tag team that I think is going to be something huge. Do it. It's the next big tag team. There's been so you know, we had war. We had the War Raiders. Oh, I know who you're going to say. We had you know you got Malonis and the, the bounces right now, but Beer Country. Yeah, I knew you were going to yes. say that. You're, so, you text me and called me a couple times about them. You're super excited about Bear Country. Yeah, those guys are so good, and they really are sort of like that War Raiders type of. Uh, not the gimmick at all, but just their style. Watch. Absolutely. Watching them versus the stunt doubles, the Marco stunt. Like, they threw those two kids around. <laughs> yeah, they, that's where I got my, that's where I, where I liked Marco stunt, because he took a beating. Yeah, and yeah. Like, he wasn't just, like, tossed. He was thrown. Yeah. Uh, so when I. George, what's your 10 list? So if you if first if first and foremost, uh, if you have not seen the opening match to American Run at 18 from last year, do yourself a favor and go watch it because what JP was talking about intergender matches and how it works, that match will change your view on what intergender wrestling is. It's not the shit that you see on WWE. It's not even. It's 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 on Tessa's level. But better, Who was if it? that makes sense. Huh? Who was it? Uh, you had Team Pazuzu. Oh yes, yes, yes. I did see that. Right, and you also had Kimberly, Jordan Grace, uh, yes. Mia Yim, and Skylar Hoop Pro. Right, Skylar. Those yes. four. Am I right? I think I I'm right. I believe so. Yeah, I did. See, I did watch that. <laughs> That's off the top of my head. So um, if I. No, it was Kimberly, Jordan Grace, um, Skyler, and Mia Yim versus uh, Team Pazuzu. Jo was it John Silver and Dickinson? I, I might be wrong on the on the, the dudes, the but I know I'm right on the women. No, I'm right. Okay, I'm gonna sh I'm just gonna give ten random ones, okay? And you guys, maybe you have or haven't seen them yet, but fucking do it, okay? And one of them is gonna be a really, really, really. Um, familiar name for a lot of us, but for other people, she gets left off many of us, and she's going to probably be the last one I mention, okay? All right. Um, everybody, B Priestley, you guys know B? I am not familiar with B Priestley. Is she related to Jason? Okay, so, 
Dee Priestley is um, Will Ospreay's significant other. Okay. She's oh. currently the stardom champ. She was the one on AEW that was holding the belt. Yeah. Black hair. That's B Priest. Okay. Uh, I already said Sadie Gibbs, so I'm just going to say here again. <laughs> She's probably going to be everywhere I say it. Um, Session Moth Martina. You guys know Moth? Session Moth? That sounds familiar. Check it out because if you look last night on Raw, I think it was about two hours in, you'll see a dude standing on the left hand side with a white sign and all it says is the moth on it. Oh, so, really? I mean, she's out there. She's she's amazing. She drinks a lot of beer. She's a party. If she wants to sesh, it's it's a good time. Nice. Um, so that's two so far, correct? Yes. Okay, I gotta make sure that I I, I keep I keep it on a on a good one. Um, Iwatani. Do you guys know Iwatani? Japanese. Mayu Iwatani. Um. No. Yes or no? Name. Okay. What did she just? It's all do? good. No, that's dude. That's why we do this. Is because it, it, when we get those names out there and people start seeing the work that these females can do, it's dude. It's amazing. Um, one we left out earlier and just super proud of. Uh, not just because she has Officer Canine. The Magna Man, but Solo Darling. If yep. you're not watching what Solo Darling is yes. doing right now, you're out of it, man. You're out of it, right? Love her. Amazing. Good, Just good person. Fun. Great uh, wrestler. You... Thicker than a stack of pan, uh, taller than a stack of pancakes, thicker than a pint of ice cream. Yeah, the Archduke of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shaza McKenzie. Yeah. Right? Jaza is another one. Uh, is that four or five? Uh, four. Four. Okay, so I got six more I got to pull out of my ass, right? Shaza. Shaza's good. We need to good. find a way um, to get people like Shaza and JXT over here more often. Like, Shaza posted something the other day that she was so sick of seeing people complain about wrestling in the States. Wrestlers complaining about wrestling in the States because they take it for granted that they there's so much wrestling here and she may not get to wrestle every weekend. Exactly. There, you know, so good attitude, great kid, just wants to wrestle. How about Kelly Klein? Yes. Joe? No? Finally Killer Kelly? I haven't heard that name. Okay, cool, dude. No, that's why we're doing this because it's, it's fun, man. Um, I'm trying to think. So, Havoc? Jessica Havoc, yes. you know Jessica. Okay. Impact. Um, man, she just. Uh, yes, she I know that. Crazy girl. What's the tag team? What am I up to? Six now. Yes, that was six. Um, how about the high end? You guys know the high end. I do you guys not. know high end? I don't. Okay. Um, no. I believe I'm she may be trained by Booker T. I'm almost positive because she's out of Houston, Texas. So I think she's doing the same thing that Rex is. Um, but that's one that's kind of on my list that I haven't. I've seen a little bit, but I haven't had a chance to see all of it, if that makes sense. Right? So I need three more. Yeah. How about the La Sicaria? I have at least. I don't know that one. Okay. That, God, God, this is going to be awesome when you guys get a chance to see this see, shit. Some, you do a lot. Like, I don't, the Japanese style, like, I love here, but I don't watch a lot of Japanese wrestling. Okay, but she is all yeah, I don't Lucha Libre. All yeah. Lucha Libre. We're, okay. So that's, she's she's all Lucha Libre. So I got two more. I promised ten, right? Yeah. Mm. God, but you said the last shit. one's going to be a good one. Oh, the last one is going to be a good one, right? I think I know who you're going to say. Who? You haven't named the two I thought you were going to say because you put them in every list you did last year. <laughs> I know of one. Uh, I think I know of one you're going to say. Io Shirai? I was going to say Shotzi. Blackheart? Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean... You saw her in that uh, evolve the other night when she just ate the chair. That was insane, right? And I, that was 
next, but the last one's Chris Statlander. Oh yeah. Yes. That's the last yes. one. Jesus. So that's those are ten amazing female wrestlers that you should check the fuck out. I think Stratlander is gonna get somewhere like this year. They keep she, she has to. It. Beyond she has to. Teasing it like, oh, she's gonna retire, and then she says, no, I'm gonna stay here. But like, they have to know something's coming. You know what I mean? She's still green. I mean, that's she's still green. Well, she's that's just pretty, she's I mean, she's still pretty green. I think she's where she's at now is where Solo was last year at this time. Yeah. Can you see but, that, or am I? I mean, is she only green because she's an alien, though? <laughs> Yeah, hey, oh, now you see the chat. Now I see you. Now I see the chat. It's just me and you, man. Nobody else is chatting with us. Yeah. It's all good, though. Are you guys yeah. excited now that you got names? You can. I'm excited that I can name ten names, and you guys only maybe knew two or three of them. That's... Or four. Right. Or five. Yeah, yeah. Half of them. I don't know. Yeah, I look forward to listening to, to watching all of these girls go. Right. Is going to publish that list? Am I going to publish a list I just came up with? Um, yeah, you gonna put, I mean, you're going to put it on Twitter or something so that, so I can look back and see it? No, you have to listen to the show. <laughs> I think you write it down. Uh, this is why it's so, like, when I take the, the when I do this top ten list, that's why I put those tweets out there so I can maybe catch somebody that I don't know. And I'm fortunate so far. Everybody that anybody has put a name out there is is the big one. But do you guys want me to to, to tell you the last one, like the name of the names sure. that yes. nobody may that gets off left off all the lists, but should probably be like number one or always at the top. Sure. The final boss, Miko Satamura. Yes. Right. Yes. I haven't heard that. I haven't seen that. She did. Shakara Pro, this is no shit. Uh, well, she she was the king, Mike one of the king of trios, right? Mike Mike Quackenbush's favorite match was what, what was the name of their of their trios team? JP, do you remember? No, it wasn't it just um, wasn't it just the name of the dojo or something? I can't remember. Because they all yeah, came but that, from that and, same and, dojo that Kimberly went over to. Uh, Stardom. Yes. Stardom. That's B. B. Priestley's the champ of that right now. That's mm-hmm. where all these girls are going. Is is I can't remember where Ray Lynn went, and that's another one I should probably mention too. Is um, what is she in? Wow, Chantilly Chella, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, you guys are tapping my brain tonight. You know who was ahead of her time for this stuff? It could hang Lufisto? with the guys. Lufisto. Lufisto. And- that's not where I would, well, Lufisto, obviously, but Nikki Rocks. Oh, Nikki Rocks, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that girl was good. So far. Right? Really good. Time. With wrestling. And Daisy, she, Hay- Daisy Hayes, you could yep. even throw in there. Yep. The thing with Nikki is Nikki could hang with the guys in and out of the ring. Oh, yeah. She I just, just, that's a, why I wish Lufisto, what the fuck's wrong with Lufisto? How come she never got a shot? Am I wrong in that? No, but I mean, if you look, it's it may not be too late. I mean, Mercedes Martinez got her shot, um, and Mercedes was another one sort of out of that class. It's just nice. I mean, especially um, coaching at WWE right now. Um, oh my God, she's been around. Sarah Del Rey. Yes, training down at the Performance Center. So when I when I think of all this talent, it all comes back to those names. Yeah. It really does for me. Even Natalia back then, yeah, back, back in the day. Yeah, so. I remember talking about her a long time ago. Oh, she was on the show when yeah, she was still guys. in Stampede Wrestling. She was on our. It was it was fun, man. She was a kid back then, just a kid. Yeah, that's crazy. To think. Same with Drew. Same with Drew Gulak and the catch point and all that shit that's going on right now. It's just when so, we say these these names, it's, we we know what the fuck we're talking about. What what is catch point? Catch point is uh, Drew Gulak's thought process of 
professional wrestling kind of a catch style where you single and go after a single point on the wrestler to weaken that point and then eventually take him out. Okay. Because Rory Gulak is doing like catch point stuff now. Yes. And has t-shirts and stuff. And someone commented on like his Instagram. And he was like, nope, I got full permission from the boss on this one. Yeah. I, you know who my boss is? Who the boss is? Oh, yeah, he might be my brother. Right. Dude, you know who was the, the last Beyond show, the butcher and the, um, what's it, the butcher and the knife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who, that's Pepper Fox. Oh, I didn't know that was Pepper Parks until you just said it. Yeah. Oh, my God. What? What's that? Pro wrestling is just ama- amazing right now. Fully comes full circle. Like, Pepper Fox was around. I remember him wrestling. He, he did a couple of NECW shows, I think, for the NWA title. And uh, to see him on Beyond doing the shit he did, that like that's a crazy-ass tag team. I'm just excited for Beyond. I'm excited for all, I mean, 1.5 million YouTube subscribers. And it's live on when, like, even when AEW, I'm telling you this right now, even if AEW goes live on Wednesday nights, I will still be on independentwrestling.tv watching Uncharted Territory. I think me and Joe will still be in Worcester. Yeah, it's just, it's that in the good. Standing in the background on TV thinking, like, I'm too old to stand. <laughs> <laughs> How many times do I have to go lean on a wall or something? <laughs> Yeah. Well, shit, we've been going for an hour. I think we got yeah. some good content out there. Hopefully, we got some some people checking some shit out uh, and understanding that Kevin Owens is about to kill everybody. I think... You know, like, but real quick, though, I want to jump in kind of, like you was talking about when we mentioned these kids, look where they're going to be and, like, you know, look where they are now. Look at where we are now and Ooh. think where we could be in a year. At the bottom of the heap, fucking yeah. eating beans. I might be on the couch <laughs> instead of my bed. Uh, no, but Here's, honestly, uh, like the sky's the limit. It's for us to make, and it's it's because of these kids. It's like we're it's almost not. I don't want to say we're piggybacking, but in the sense like we're making a name. We're putting out our voices. We're talking about these kids that are wrestling, that are putting their backs out there. And we're still going to be there in a year. We were we're just there. we're we're fortunate to have a platform on WrestlingNewsSource.com where we can take a young talent, interview them, and then have on a weekly average what twenty five thousand people a week download yeah, and listen insane. to them across the world. Insane. I think we get more than twenty five thousand now. Well, it's just I'm just saying an average over the last yeah, year, no, no, probably you. about. 25,000 a week, and we're super blessed to be able to have that platform and also give these kids a platform. I mean, that JXT interview, we act, we left it up for 10 days, and it got 42,000 downloads, yeah. right? So it was JXT I mean, that's, and Davey Cash right before and it's, Davey Cash's fucking partner hit me with the cheer. <laughs> JP, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, speaking of the cheer incident, I got a text message from a person the other day that said that they finally saw that video. See, my mother saw and the that, video. And yes, okay. I wasn't going to say it was your mother, but your mother wants to offer him out. Yes, and that is selfie talk. For those of talk, you who but... don't know what that means. You got to say, okay, to you, you got to explain <laughs> offer him out because I know what that means. Offer him out to a fight. <laughs> JP's mother wants to fight him. Chris Fyro, my mother's coming for you. <laughs> Let's book the match right now. She's Neil fucking Cage, pissed. No holds barred. My mo- my money's on the angry salty mother. Yeah. <laughs> See, cause you know what though? She won't need a she won't need a gimmick anything. She's just gonna go hardcore. She'll take she'll have a real bat. She's gonna she'll fucking be... Sammy Callahan your ass. No, <laughs> screw that, she's gonna wetty bug your ass. <laughs> we'll see. I'll see. <laughs> I, uh, we'll see the hoods at some point. I don't know where. Uh, I actually have bumped into those guys outside of wrestling a few times, and I may or may not have a cheer for Pyro. Just a, and just a side note, when you uh, when that happens, and then somebody like me 
uh, takes that and takes it as a work and tweets it, it could possibly cause people bookings. That's, that's yeah, yeah. Very possible, but people Lesson should know learned. better. <laughs> people cool. Should know so, better. Uh, you want to take us out, dude? Oh, for pizza? Yeah. I like pizza. I like pizza. Is that, I what, like you, pizza. Is that what you say in prison? I like I, pizza. I like to eat pizza with my fake teeth. You guys, check us out. Uh, make sure you go to the new website, irishfootpodcast.com. Get, get there. Um, sign up. You can you can talk all sorts of shit when we do our lists. Um, we'll have uh, weekly updates for Beyond. We're working on a bunch of stuff with some other promotions um, as well as some other podcasts. Uh, so it's just a good time. And also make sure when you tweet us, you use the hashtag TIWMafia. Um, follow us at 3 Irish Boys with a Z. Um, I don't know. I don't, that's it, right? Shout out to Trey. Shout out Team Trey. Hashtag Team Trey, brother. Hey, this he's in for surgery. Um, yes, today. Chris, Chris, we're thinking about you and the family. Um, Leanne, uh, always like uh, hashtag Team Trey. Just put in there, guys. Um, RJ, I think over at um, Ringside Rant, Ringside Rant had somebody do some artwork and and they're doing that. So make sure you support them, um, especially RJ and uh, Boot to the Face. Good friends. Yes. Just hashtag, just lots of love and prayers. Hashtag Team Trey. Buy a T-shirt, guys. Help this kid out. Um, it's it's a rare blood disorder, and yeah. he was walking the other day. It's just it's hard to watch from afar, and it's just a, it's been a very difficult summer for the for the Rucker family, and we love them like we just yeah. they're they're family to us. Yeah, I mean, if you can't buy a T-shirt, if you talk to Chris, I mean, uh, I know Trey likes to read. And likes like the Lord of the Rings, that type of stuff, Star Wars, that type of thing, Legos. If you can contribute, send anything. Go, go ahead. I know they're gonna be laid up for a little while, so. Uh, yeah, and it's you're right. Insane. It's it's books. It that's what he likes. Is he's a cool kid. He's got a lot of likes, and you're right. Just send him books. Send him things. Even if you got that shit laying around the house, uh, right. you know. Yeah, absolutely. Just you ha, look. Uh, it's at boot to the face. Um, send him a message. I'm sure the bearded master boy will be able to help, help you out. But anything you guys can do to help out the family, it's 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 well appreciated. I'm sure. Yeah. Guys, any other plugs, dude? Do we have anything uh, else? That was it. I just wanted to shout out Trey. Just that yeah. we're going to be having a lot more things coming up in the future, uh, and I just want people to stand by and 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 watch. We're going to come by. We're going to come up with. Some bigger things going to be come out a little bit heavier and hotter, and uh, just wait and see. Yeah, if you if you hang on to these capes, you better hold the fuck on because Superman's flying away. Right. <laughs> and we're not talking that Christopher Reeve Superman. Take us out, JP. Please. See you, see you next Tuesday. <laughs>